In this lesson, we're looking at surds. More specifically, we're looking at how to deal with surds that are on the bottom of a fraction. That is, they are the denominator in themselves. When we try and deal with fractions, we'd like to have whole numbers on the bottom, nice integers so that our calculations are easy to make and our working out is nice and simple. If we have a look at this example here of the 3 over the square root of 2, it looks imposing, it's hard to deal with if you want to do any operations with that and it's much easier to have the third on the top so that it is easier to work with. Rationalising the denominator is as the skill suggests. Uh, with rationalising we are making a rational number of the denominator. At the moment remember that thirds are irrational numbers, they are a decimal that never ends and there is no repeating feature about them. So we are going to make this one into a nice even whole number because they're the best to work with. Okay. How are we going to do that? We can multiply it by another number. Now, what number could we multiply by a third so that we end up with a whole number answer? The easiest, fastest, most efficient way of doing that is to multiply a third by itself. That way, you are always going to get a nice even whole number answer. You're always going to get the number you started with. In our case, we're going to get two. And this is just the easiest way of doing that. Now, at the moment though, by multiplying the bottom of our fraction by the square root of 2, we're altering the value of our fraction. It is changing. It is no longer going to be equal to 3 over root 2. So how we're going to fix that is we will multiply it by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Now, what this means is if we have a look at the added bit by itself in our circle of green, any number divided by itself equals 1. And if we are going to multiply our fraction by 1, we are not going to change it one bit at all. The value of it will not change. Remembering how to multiply fractions, it is top multiplied by the top. So we are going to have 3 root 2 on the top and bottom multiplied by the bottom. So we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Remembering, multiplying two square roots that are the same together always gives us the whole number that is inside the square root zone. So there we have it. It's as easy as that. We now have a whole number, a rational number on the bottom. And while our top is looking a little worse for wear than what it started, uh, this will actually end up being easy to work with. So today we're just going to concentrate on this skill alone, how to deal with it in the many different shapes and forms that we will be asked to deal with here. Okay, our next example. We have 5 over 4 times the square root of 3. Once again, the third is on the bottom. It is not easy to deal with. And now we have the added complication of the third having a coefficient of 4. The steps remain the same. We are still going to multiply it by the third. So it is just going to be the square root of 3. We don't really need to worry about the 4. If we do, we're just going to make more work for ourselves. Remember, to keep the balance of our fraction, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number so that we are not altering the weight or the value of our original expression. Okay, multiplying along the top, we have the 5 times the square root of 3, which will just give us 5 root 3. Along the bottom, we have 4 root 3 times root 3. Now, I'm going to write that out in full. So it's 4 root 3 times the square root of 3. That red is our intermittent step. Okay, on the top, not much we can do about that. That is going to stay as 5 root 3. Along the bottom, remember how to multiply thirds together. It is whole numbers by whole numbers, and then the third by the third. So in our case, it's 4 times 1 for the whole numbers, which gives us 4. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 gives us just 3. Cleaning that up a bit, our top line doesn't change at all. It's still 5 root 3. However, on the bottom, we have 12. Having a look at our n fraction, 5 over 12, they don't have a common factor between them, so that's as simple as that fraction will ever get. Moving on to some harder examples. Here, we have the top and the bottom with a coefficient. How do we deal with that? We have the top and the bottom, there is a third. Which one do we pick to rationalise the denominator? These are the questions that we're going to answer now. Okay, we're going to be multiplying it by a fraction. 
Now, rationalize the denominator. It's telling us that we have to fix the denominator. So we don't have to worry about what kind of surd or anything is on the top. We just have to worry about this little number there and how are we going to make it into a rational number, which means multiply it by itself. Maintain the balance of the fraction. We're multiplying the top and the bottom by the same number. So on the top we have 8 root 5 multiplied by the square root of 2. On the bottom we have 3 root 2 multiplied by root 2. Okay, fleshing this out a bit. We have whole number, the 8 on the top, multiplied by the 1 at the front of there. So we have an 8 whole number coefficient at the front. Now we have the square root of 5 multiplied by the square root of 2. Multiplying thirds, the numbers get multiplied together, but they remain under the square root sign. So we have 8 root 10 on the top. Cleaning up the bottom, we have a 3 multiplied by the 1 out the front of the square root of 2. So even though there's no number there, we can assume there is a 1. Open up the square root. Under that, 2 times 2, which gives us 4. Now, I've probably done too much of a step there, and we could have just written 2 to start with. However, let's see how we go. Okay. On the top, 8 root 10 over... 3 times 2. Now I can start to cancel my fraction down a bit now. We're always keeping that in mind in that on the bottom I have a 2 and the 2 is a factor of an 8 leaving me with a 4. So on the top I have 4 root 10 and on the bottom I simply have 3. That's all that's left. Alright, having a look at that our steps didn't change. It just got a little more complicated to identify which third we wanted to use Keep in mind that we want to rationalise the denominator, so we always need to use the third that's on the bottom of the fraction. We will have a look at another example. In this case, we have an actual addition on the top. We no longer just have one term divided by one term. We have two divided by the one term. How do we go about rationalising this denominator? First step stays the same. We still need the square root of 3. That is our problem. That's what we want to get rid of. So we're going to multiply it by itself. And whatever we multiply the bottom by, we multiply the top of the fraction by that as well. Fleshing this out, we have square root of 2 plus 1, and all of that is being multiplied by the square root of 3. On the bottom, we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Remembering back to a past lesson where we looked at binomial expansion of thirds and we started with the first step of a single factor multiplied by the brackets when talking about thirds. That is the same process that we're going to be doing here. To start off with, we're going to have the square root of 2, the first term in the brackets, multiplied by the root 3 to give us the square root of 6. Then we're going to have the second term in the brackets multiplied by the factor on the outside to give us a positive 1 times square root of 3, which is just a square root of 3. On the bottom, root 3 times root 3 is going to give us simply a root 3. Now, looking at that answer, is there a perfect square factor of 6? Remembering our perfect square factors of 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36 and so on. Is there any one of those that can go into a 6 evenly? Uh, no, the root 3 is on his own. So that is as good as our answer can get. We cannot simplify those thirds anymore. We cannot start to simplify the fraction because 3 is not a factor of either root 6 or root 3. So that's as good as it gets. We're happy. One last example. This is an extension example. I don't expect all of us to be able to do this kind of question. Although, if you're intending on doing further study of pure mathematics in HSC, this will definitely come in handy. Looking at our previous example where we had the addition sum on the top, now our addition sum, or a subtraction in our case, is on the bottom. While the steps themselves don't remain too much more complicated, the process itself does become longer 
and it starts to head into our last lesson of binomial expansion of surface. To rationalise this denominator, we cannot simply multiply it by the square root of 5, and we'll have a look at why. Our past previous skill would tell us that there's a third on the bottom, and that's what we multiply the bottom of this fraction by, and whatever we multiply the bottom by, we have to multiply the top by. So on the top, we have square root of 3 times square root of 5 to give us square root of 15. On the bottom, we need to do a couple. We have square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is going to give us an ordinary 5. Then we have the negative 1 multiplied by the square root of 5, which will end up giving us a negative square root of 5. Now by doing the steps that we normally would do, we have ended up with a third on the bottom still. And we could keep multiplying that by the square root of 5, but it's not going to get us anywhere. So this is not how we rationalise the denominator when the third also has some sort of addition or subtraction problem attached to it. We need to be able to use our binomial expansion skills. Okay, starting again. We will just rewrite it down here and have a complete example of the working out. There it is there. Get rid of that previous working out. Okay, square root of 3 divided by the square root of 5 minus 1. What we need to do is we need to take and recognise the denominator of this fraction as a whole. And the sneaky little skill that we can do to get rid of and rationalise the bottom of this is to multiply it by the same numbers, so we still need a square root of 5 and we still need a 1, but instead of a minus sign, we're going to multiply it by an addition sign. So that's the only thing we've changed. We've swapped a minus sign for an addition sign. And like always, the same rules with fractions apply. Whatever you multiply the bottom by, you must multiply the top by. So that was the hard bit. That was the sneaky little skill that's going to allow us to rationalise this denominator. Now comes the long end of the question. The steps remain the same, there is now just more of them. So let's have a look at this answer. We first off have square root of 3 times square root of 5. Then we have the square root of 3 multiplied by 1. That's our top line. Our bottom line is going to get quite involved now. We have the square root of 5 multiplied by the square root of 5. Plus the square root of 5 multiplied by 1. Now remember, this is going to start to look like binomial expansion because we have two terms added together, two factors, multiplied by another two factors that have been added together. We've done the root 5, so the first term by the first term and the second term. Now it's time for the second term by the first term and the second term. So negative 1 times root 5. And I've run out of room on the side of the board here. We also need to multiply negative 1 by positive 1. Okay, I've added a little addition sign in there. Time to clean up our answer. On the top, root 5 times root 3, square root of 15, plus square root of 3. On the bottom, in green, root 5 times root 5 is 5, plus square root of 5 times 1 is going to give us the square root of 5, plus negative 1 times the square root of 5 is negative square root of 5, and negative 1 times 1 gives you minus 1. Here is why we reversed the sign from a negative to a positive. What we've created is we've got positive square root of 5 and a negative square root of 5. Those two numbers cancel each other out. Anything take away itself is nothing in the end. So what we've done 
is we have successfully rationalized the denominator because we have eliminated all certs on the bottom. That is the ultimate goal of our step, and that is using our little starting trick here of a positive and a negative, switching the sign. That is the end goal. That is always going to happen. Whenever you have a third add or minus another number on the bottom, the denominator, you need to multiply it by those same two numbers, the same third and the same integer, but with a reverse sign in the middle. Let's clean up this answer a bit. We need to scroll down, give myself some more room. Okay, cleaning up the top line. Square root of 15. 9 or 4 do not go into it, so there are no perfect square factors. So the top line is going to remain square root of 15 plus the square root of 3. On the bottom, we simply have 5 minus 1, which gives us 4. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video, and good luck with rationalizing a denominator.